it's not easy to learn to read faster. You've been reading your whole life at this point, and so you're not going to totally reorient your entire reading ability. But there are some tricks you can use to read faster. First off, I want to say use phrasereader.com. Phrasereader.com, great tool. What it let, and I'll put the link below this video. What it lets you do is copy paste in text from anywhere and display it to yourself at different reading speeds. So you could use The Economist, you could use Scientific American, or if you have the PDFs, you could use actual LSAT questions too. Just copy them in and display them at 200 words per minute, 300 words per minute. Kind of place yourself on this reading comp treadmill to get faster. That's one thing you could do. That's kind of like a speed reading hack sort of thing. Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. If not, I've got something else for you too, which is just when you're looking at the passage, dumb it down for yourself. They are so great at over complexifying everything, even things like I saw one reading comp passage they took from the New, a New York Times article and they boringified it. Like they made it more boring for the LSAT specifically. And so if you can remove some of those layers by focusing on the basics, what are the major viewpoints and almost like caricaturing them for yourself, like old versus new or subjectivism versus objectivism or conservative versus liberal, whatever it may be. If you can just paint with a broad brush and put the different groups into a couple of major camps, it'll be much easier to relate to it and then you'll get through it faster. I totally get where you're coming from. I honestly don't like the science ones either, but what I do is again, I dumb it down. So let's say you have like previously, people used to think about a certain topic this way. Now they think about it some other way. Like they thought the earth was flat now they think it's round. So you have like old versus new, the old way versus the new way. And so they could give you all the details on the theory behind each side, but you just say old way versus new. You could have wrong versus right or outdated versus updated or what the author disagrees with versus what they agree with. And there's going to be lots of details and theory and technical terminology. Skip all of that. When you see details, speed up. When you see articulations of major viewpoints, slow down and read more thoroughly. The details you can always come back to later, but my aim for my students is to get through the passage in maybe two and a half, three minutes max so that you have enough time for the questions later. If you're going pretty slow and you don't want, you can't speak, maybe you're going to spend four minutes or five minutes reading the passage. I'd say definitely don't spend any more than four or else you'll have like 30 seconds per question or something, which isn't really enough. So you, what you might want to do is take the approach. And this of course is limiting your score to some extent, but let's say you're not looking to break 160. You're looking to go to a middle of the road law school, which is fine. If that's your goal, you might consider only doing three passages so that you have more time to go into them in more depth. If you do three passages only, then you have closer to 12 minutes per passage, which might still be, be okay. Then if you're spending four or five minutes on your initial read, or if you're super slow and you think you might have ADHD, then consider applying for testing accommodations, which could give you extra time. Cause then if you get time and a half or double time, then you'll have plenty of time to slow down and read more thoroughly. Great question. And I think the biggest mistake students make on reading comp is doing the questions in the order given. You do, should not do them in the order that they're given to you simply because that's how they're laid out. There are three different types of major reading comprehension questions, and I would do them in the following order. Do all the general global ones first, like what's the main idea? What's the primary purpose? What's the tone of the passage? What's the author's opinion? Do those first. They're the general, knock them out. And if you can't walk away from the passage with the main idea, then you should probably go back and get the main idea because you need that to unlock everything else for yourself. Next, you have the local detail oriented questions. They will at least they'll give you a key term to look for and they'll highlight it for you on the digital LSAT on the screen for you. So you can immediately jump there. They might tell give you, give you a paragraph reference and so you could jump there or they might just ask you a random detail. Do those next. Then the, lastly, I would do the more inferential questions that require reading between the lines. What would the author be most likely to agree with? or the questions that are more similar to parallel reasoning, like analogies or strengthen or weaken. But do them in that order, which is really, again, easy to hard, and you can build your understanding as you go. For the harder questions, you may have to go back for it. There's no way around it. Those are the details that I actually recommend skimming earlier so that at least you can get to the, get the main idea, extract that, and knock out the general questions. You know, the inferential questions that require reading between the lines, those are the hardest, 
and they're only worth tackling after everything else. And they might require a level of detail where going back would be valuable, and that's okay. It's okay to go back to the passage. That's why they, they let you keep looking at it while you're doing every single question if you want to. But I'd say that ultimately these parallel questions, save them for last. They are going to require more time. And since everything's worth the same, there is no reason to spend an inordinate amount of time on them. Great question. On the digital LSAT, LSAC has given you some tools for highlighting and underlining. So these annotation tools, definitely play around with them. They're on familiar.lsac.org. You can test it out and see how they work for you. Personally, I don't really recommend using them just because it takes a lot of time to play around with them. And you might not always be marking things that are super useful for you later, but what you could do is articulate for yourself the main idea or the major viewpoint, or two, if there's two or three major viewpoints, just articulate them for yourself in a key phrase or a key sentence and write that on your scratch paper on the side. So at least you can refer back to it over the course of the passage. But I really wouldn't do anything more than that.